I mean, I'd always wanted to sign the Rolling Stones. I kept trying, kept trying. That must have been so exciting when and you that finally was, that. Did was that was a great day. Yeah, that must have been a great day. <laughs> um, and I'd never really smoked. Um, and Keith Richards <laughs> taught me to roll a joint on the day that we signed the Rolling Stones. <laughs> I was, um, uh, I was interested um, as a sort of young, young 14, 15 year old about and what was going on around the world. Um, um, and I was inquisitive. Um, and, uh, and the Vietnamese war uh, was raging. And um, it seemed to me, as it seemed to a lot of young people, a very unjust war, uh, as most wars actually turn out to be. And, um, uh, and I, like a lot of other people, wanted a campaign to try to stop it. Um, and um, there was no uh, young person's magazine at the time. Um, and, um, and it's quite strange, because I'm dyslexic, uh, that I should feel that I can... <laughs> uh, who's dyslexic in this room? <laughs> All, all the best people in the world are just like, sorry to the rest of you, but anyway. <laughs> um, they, um, uh, but, um, yeah, so being dyslexic, thinking that I could be an editor of a magazine, but, um, but anyway, I thought I, I could give it a shot. And, but, and, and, and so I decided to leave school and start a magazine to, uh, yeah, a campaigning magazine to try to reform education and try to tackle issues like like things like the Vietnamese War and the Biafran War and other wars that were going on at the time. Um, I never thought I, I was becoming an entrepreneur. I don't think the word entrepreneur actually existed 50 years ago. Um, in Britain, all, the, all businesses were run by governments, really. British Gas, right. British Coal, British Telecom, British Airways. You know, and uh, So the word ont entrepreneur didn't really exist. Um, but. In, in starting this magazine, I had to make sure it survived. I didn't have any money, so, um, so I had to worry about printing and paper manufacturing and distribution and selling it. And, uh, and that started taking up quite a lot of time. And, uh, and the word survival was very important because in those days, you couldn't uh, raise money to start your businesses. You had to sort of try to start them fund them, just fund them from people wanting to buy advertising or, or, or buying copies of your magazine. And um, so I learned, I, I learned the art of being an entrepreneur uh, by, you know, in the jungle, trying, trying to survive. And the magazine became my education. And, uh, and it was, a, you know, a lot of fun. And, um, and one, thing, one thing led on to another. <laughs> Well, first of all, you have to come up with the name of a brand. And, um, uh, and as a 15, 16-year-old, I was sitting around in a basement. <laughs> and um, and one, of the, one of the girls who was uh, sitting there with me um, said, well, we're, we're all virgins, and laughed hysterically. <laughs> and, and said, um, uh, why don't you call it virgin? And uh, the only other name we had was Slip Disc Records, and, uh, <laughs> and um, Slip you chose you chose well. Slip Disc <laughs> Airlines would may not have worked. Well, so uh, so um, anyway, we went we went for Virgin. Um, we took it took us four years for the registry office to let us register it. They 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 claimed it was rude, and um, <laughs> and after three or four years, I got the dictionary out and, and I wrote at them a letter and said, look, the English dictionary says that the virgin is the opposite of rude. It's pure, it's untouched, it's unblemished. It's, <laughs> it's everything that's perfect. And uh, finally they- They, um, they relented. They gave in. And um, um, <laughs> they, uh, um, I'm not sure how pure it was after we'd had it for a few years, but anyway. <laughs> um, they, um, uh, but, um, but we then, um, yeah, so the music business just simply came about, again, a bit by accident. Um, uh, a young lad of 15 brought me a tape, 
um, and I loved the music. Um, and, um, and he said that no record company would put the music out. So, um, so I said, well, look, let me go and you know, try a few record companies myself. And after, after going around eight record companies and being turned down, um, I thought, screw it, let's do it. We'll start a record company. And, um, uh, and um, Virgin Records was then born. And, uh, and this 15-year-old album um, was called Tubular Bells. And, um, and, it, and it, you know, um, it was just music, um, yeah. no, no vocals. Yeah. Um, but it, it outsold Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. So, I mean, it was a big, big, big hit at the big, time. Big, big record, yeah. And um, we managed to get uh, the Exorcist to use it as their soundtrack. And, and, um, and, it, and it, it, did, it did well. And that, and that really started uh, building, us building what well, became the biggest independent yeah. record company in the world. And um, I mean, I'd always wanted to sign the Rolling Stones. I kept trying, kept trying. That must have been so exciting when and you that finally was, that. that was a great day. <laughs> yeah, that must have been a great day. Um, and, I mean, it's um, a great day to go see the Rolling Stones, but to actually no, sign No, no, it, it was brilliant. And, um, and I'd never really smoked. Um, and Keith Richards <laughs> taught me to roll a joint on the day that we signed the Rolling Stones. <laughs> And uh, I'm hopeless at it ever since. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a good one. <laughs> I bet you've used that before. <laughs> so so uh, anyway, he came. We got, we, we, we got our 747. I better give one bit of useful business advice. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, when, when, so you can imagine the people who were running the record company with me got in a, a complete panic when I told them that we were moving into the airline business. And, um, and so I had to convince them that the airline wasn't going to bring the record company down. And, um, and obviously the most important thing in business is protecting the downside. Um, and so the most important part of the negotiation with Boeing was to persuade them that if the airline didn't work out, as I thought it would, that we could hand the plane back at the end of the first year. Um, and they actually agreed on that. I mean, they, wow. they, they, they wanted to see a competitor to BA so they could sell, you know, sell they more could, planes. So they could yeah. sell planes to that competitor and also, you know, sharpen what were the price that they got from British Airways. So, uh, so they agreed, and at the end of that year, um, the air, people loved Virgin Atlantic um, and they sold us two more. And the rest, the rest is history, as they say. That was 35 years ago. Yeah. Extraordinary. Yeah, I think, I think the, um, you know, we set up three airlines, um, Virgin Australia, right. Virgin America, and Virgin Atlantic. And, um, and they've all been very successful. Um, and they've been successful, um, I think, well, I mean, most businesses are successful because of the people, but the people uh, only excel if you give them the tools to do a great job and if they, if they feel loved. Sure. And um, so I think, um, you know, what was critical in Virgin Atlantic was that all, every single little detail um, was right. So we were, the, you know, we were the first airline to introduce seatback videos and five years before British Airways. And, you know, kids who traveled on, on Virgin uh, would not let their, their parents travel on any other airline because sure. they, they wanted to, they wanted seatback videos. And, um, you know, we had stand up bars for, you know, upper class passengers. And uh, I'm sure lots of romances started at, at our, at, at our upper class at bars. Our bars. <laughs> And we're not the kind of airline that banged on lavatory doors either. So, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> they, um, so anyway, we were we were a fun fun airline. <laughs> it's taking um, eight hundred, uh, in our case, eight hundred wonderful engineers and technicians. Uh, working day and night uh, in the Mojave Desert, which isn't the most uh, salubrious place to work. Um, but um, uh, they're all you know, completely committed to what they're doing. Um, uh, it's taking another couple of hundred engineers in Long Beach, uh, working, working up. <laughs> Long Beach? <laughs> uh, we're, we're working very hard to get our, um, our, our large rocket um, launch to put small satellites up, um, and uh, and it and it's taken sort of twelve years hard work. So this is you know this this is really a really long term investment. And um, and what Virgin uh, what Virgin Galactic is trying to do is to uh, is slightly different from what uh, Elon uh, is trying to do. Um, I mean, what Elon achieved last week was yeah, absolutely breathtaking. Um, the, um, um, what, we're, what, we're, what we're building is, is spaceships shaped, shaped, like, uh, you know, shaped like spaceships and, and, and also you know, reminiscent of airplanes as well. Right. Um, with the idea that uh, people will be able to uh, fly into space on, on, a, on a spaceship uh, and then come back uh, in, back into Earth and, and land, uh, land in the same spaceship. And, uh, and hopefully one day we can develop it from, um, from spaceships going to space to point-to-point -point travel uh, and other quite exciting things which we've got planned. Um, so it's, 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 been, um, it's been a long haul. We've had 
uh, you know, we, 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 I think all, all three companies that have been uh, working on this have, uh, have, have had uh, tears as well as, uh, as, well, as, well as great moments. Um, this, this year, we've, we think we're finally there, and over the next few months, um, uh, I th we hope it'll be Virgin Galactic's turn to, uh, to, for, the, for the world to marvel and for, and for all our team to finally achieve everything they set out to achieve. One of the biggest uh, technical challenges is, uh, is coming back into Right. Um, it, uh, in into Earth's orbit, and uh, and and that's been the most dangerous time in 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 uh, past space expeditions. Mm -hmm. um, Bert Rutan was the genius that developed um, the, the mechanism on Virgin Galactic, which effectively turns into a giant shuttlecock, and it comes back into the Earth's atmosphere just like a shuttlecock. Um, so it, it, it slows itself up, um, then it reforms again as a spaceship and comes into land. Um, uh, it's a magnificent to, to, you know, to, see, to see the spaceship you know, folding, folding into a shuttlecock and then coming back out again. Um, uh, <coughs> anyway, that's one of, yeah, one, of, one, of, one of many challenges. I mean, with our, um, with our small Earth, you know, with Virgin Orbit, um, what we're trying to do is uh, put up with um, OneWeb, which we, our partners, um, 2,000 satellites around the Earth, um, uh, connecting the billions of people who are not connected at all um, in remote parts of Bali or Africa and so on, um, and even remote parts of America. And, um, <laughs> and um, and there, what we've actually done is we, we've taken a Virgin Atlantic, one of the very early Virgin Atlantic 747s, um, and we're going to fly it up to 50,000 feet attached to the wing of a 747. Um, and then we're going to drop it from a 747, and it's going to fire and, and go into space from there. Um, and um, so it's quite fun, actually, cool. that uh, yeah. you know, we were able just to trans transfer a 747 from Virgin Atlantic to our space program and, and, um, uh, and it's now ready, 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 you know, hopefully mid this year to start operation. Oof. Um, I think a good leader has to be um, a really good listener and, um, and I'm listening uh, to fascinating people all the time. Um, not famous people, just, you know, e you know, everybody has some expertise in, sure. in something in life. And, um, and, uh, and I get excited by um, so many new things. I mean, um, you know, geothermal, for instance. Um, uh, you know, if geo not everybody gets excited about geothermal. Okay. That's, you know, that's <laughs> if, you're, if you're worried about climate change, you yeah, get excited, you should be excited about, about geothermal. geothermal. Absolutely. No, yeah. but I, no, I just recently have come across some geothermal technology that, uh, that you know, for the regions of the Caribbean, which you know, I happen to live in, and, and um, for places you know, where, you know, all, the, all the way around the center of the earth, um, you know, if you drill down 3,000 feet, uh, you've got you come across incredible heat, yep. and um, uh, and that heat, if it come, if you can bring it up uh, to the Earth's surface, uh, it works, you know, tw 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it uses up a tiny amount of space compared to um, solar or wind, which are both equally very good technologies, but you need you need more space for them. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm just very lucky. I mean, I'm, I'm, my, my mind is open all the time. We've just uh, Virgin Hyperloop One. I'm, I'm, I've just come back from Dubai, uh, where they are incredibly excited by the possibilities of Virgin Hyperloop One. I'm off to India on on Sunday um, to talk to the Indians about it. Um, uh, you know, it will be transformative, I think, yes. you know, connecting airports, uh, connecting cities. Um, and, you know, that's a new technology. We've got a test, uh, a test run in the, in the last, outside Las Vegas, which you've been to. 
Um, and it's, it, it's just lovely being at the birth of a new technology, very, very exciting. No, it's a good question. I mean, there, there are so many problems in this world um, and trying to prioritize, you know, which problems uh, to solve and which you just feel you don't have the energy for or the resources for is, is, is a really tough one. Um, which is why we're, we're trying to get, like, you know, every single business in this room, um, even if you're a really small business. I love this kid at um, whatever it was, eight, coming up to me and p pitching me earlier in the in the corridor. Um, but um, uh, but uh, and and giving me one of his products. You're he shouldn't, trouble, he shouldn't, you're he shouldn't give away the products. He must <laughs> sell them anyway. Um, you're going to have trouble getting out of here now that someone knows that you were pitched in the corner. They, they, um, um, but, um, uh, but I think that if, if um, every single person in this room uh, can adopt at least one problem, and, and um, you know, like, you know, if it's just, uh, you know, trying to find a roof over the, the, the person you keep walking by who's sleeping in the street every day, you know, going to your office, if, you know, something, you know, but... Just a, a problem in this world. Um, I think um, you know, the, every single person in this room will feel you know, that much better for it you know, uh, in 50 years' time when they've looked back on their life and their careers. And, um, and obviously, as, you, as businesses get bigger, you can, you can, you can um, adopt bigger and bigger and bigger problems. Sure. And you can use your entrepreneurial skills, your resources, your, your teams to take on, on some of the really big problems of this world. Um, and I think uh, you, we cannot let, business, uh, let government try to sort, sort the problems of the world out. They haven't got the entrepreneurial skills generally to do so. Um, the, um, uh, so, and it's great fun. I mean, you know, we, we, we have, um, uh, we have something called Audacious Ideas Gathering on Necker every year, where we get some of the more successful people together, and we uh, we get throughout the year with with Ted, uh, we get maybe 300 companies, sorry, 300 organisations to right. pitch, um, and then we choose 10 of the of the most important things in the world to try to resolve, and then we go out to try to resolve them every year. Um, you know, it could be a particular kind of blindness in Africa. Um, uh, you know, it could be, you know, how, how do we sort out methane leaks around the world? And, you know, can we use satellites to spot them and, and, and then alert the companies to these methane leaks um, and so on. And um, so, uh, uh, you know, so as you get, as you get, as your businesses get more successful, you become more entrepreneurially aware as to how to look at situations in this world, um, then, then you get into a position where you can actually start tackling some of the bigger issues.